why is it that when I go to other believers to talk to them about this book, that they will shoo me off before having ever read it for themselves? Hey my friend, I'm sorry to hear that people have dismissed your questions about the book of Enoch without having read it. I have read it and I'd be happy to give you my take. Is it possible that this book which spoke about being for a remote generation in the future is actually being revealed to us today. The community that composed and pieced together the Book of Enoch over the last three centuries BCE believed that they were the last generation, and they were writing about things happening during their own time. For instance, as scholar George Nicholsberg points out, the Book of the Watchers is likely a symbolic critique of the Jerusalem priesthood. The authors of the Book of the Watchers portray the Watchers as priests of a heavenly temple who have defiled themselves and the temple through forbidden contact with earthly women. The authors of First Enoch explicitly cite defilement by the blood of women. According to some scholars, like Nicholsberg, when speaking of these heavenly priests, the authors are actually referring to the earthly priests of the Jerusalem temple. Two Second Temple Jewish writings speak to this exact issue. The Damascus document and the Psalms of Solomon criticize the Jerusalem priests for having sex with women during their time of menstrual impurity, thus ritually defiling themselves and the temple. Thus, the story of the Watchers is probably meant to allude to the practices of the Jerusalem temple at the time. The community criticized the Jerusalem priesthood in this symbolic way, something that was very common in apocalyptic literature. Just as Daniel and Revelation use symbolic imagery to describe real empires and events going on in their day, so does First Enoch. So is it possible that First Enoch speaks to events happening in our own day? Well, unlike Daniel and Revelation, which I think do have relevance to us in our own day, I don't think that's the case with First Enoch, simply because it's not inspired by God. Is it possible that this book, which seems to be referenced by our Messiah and others in the scriptures, is actually scripture? in itself. No, first, because Yeshua and the apostles referencing or quoting something doesn't mean that they thought of it as scripture. For example, Paul quoted pagan poets. Second, we know what Yeshua's definition of scripture was. The biblical canon during Yeshua's day had a threefold division known as the Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim, that is the law, prophets, and writings. That was and is the shape of the Old Testament canon of scripture. It is known by the acronym Tanakh, and the contents of this canon match the Old Testament canon of our Protestant Bibles today. This threefold canon is referenced not only in the New Testament, but also throughout other Jewish literature before and after the time of Christ. For instance, Ben Sirah, the author of the apocryphal book, The Wisdom of Sirach, had a grandson who translated his grandfather's writings into Greek around 130 BC. This translator, Ben Sirah's grandson, wrote his own prologue to his translation, wherein he makes reference to this threefold shape of the Old Testament canon. Remarkably, the author distinguishes his grandfather's writings, that is, the wisdom of Sirach, from, quote, the law itself and the prophecies and the rest of the books the law, prophets, and writings. So we see that by 130 BC, the books contained in this threefold canon were already widely considered to be uniquely sacred and distinct from any additional writings, including the apocryphal writings. As far as we know, no manuscript or historical evidence indicates that pseudepigrapha, such as First Enoch, were ever accepted as part of this threefold canon of scripture. Neither the Greek Septuagint nor the Hebrew Masoretic texts include First Enoch in their sets. In fact, in a passage from Against Apion 1-7, which was written in the 90s AD, first century Jewish historian Josephus wrote that a defined Hebrew canon already existed by his time. This confirmation from Josephus is remarkable for several reasons. First, he acknowledges the threefold canon of the Hebrew scriptures, which is the same threefold division that we find in the New Testament and other Jewish literature. Second, Josephus limits the number of books to a specific number, 22. Five books, he says, are the books of Moses, 13 are the prophets, and the remaining four, he says, are hymns to God and precepts for human life. So there you have that threefold division. As a quick side note, the Jewish canon today has 24 books, which matches the contents of our Protestant canon of 39 books. The reason for the difference in number is that the Jewish canon combines books that are separated in the Protestant canon. For example, in the Jewish canon, all the minor prophets are combined into one book, but the contents of both canons are exactly 
exactly the same. Josephus's canon is believed to have also combined Ruth with Judges and Lamentations with Jeremiah, which are separated in the current Jewish canon, giving us a 22-book canon. In either case, we know that First Enoch was not part of this 22-book threefold canon that we see in Josephus, and Josephus's canon is believed to have been in place for at least 300 years prior to his writing. So the evidence we have from primary sources confirms that the biblical canon during Yeshua's day excluded First Enoch. This is important because Yeshua fully affirmed the biblical canon of his day, defining it as scripture. The third reason we know they didn't consider First Enoch scripture is because it contains heresy, like the fact that Enoch is portrayed as the divine messiah figure. That puts the Book of Enoch in direct conflict with Scripture. Is it possible that men could have got it wrong when canonizing our scriptures today. Only if you think the Messiah got it wrong by affirming the Old Testament canon of his day, which we know excluded First Enoch. Should we at least look into these things and determine it for ourselves without just trusting what men Tell us. Absolutely. I've looked into it quite a bit, searched my website for numerous articles and videos on the subject. I'd also recommend a video I did with Michael Jones of Inspiring Philosophy on the topic. Hope that helps. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did like it, consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you want to see more content like this, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. You can also hit that little bell so that you'll be notified when new videos like this are released. I'll see you next time. Blessings and Shalom.